Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today we are on day four of our flower elf. So we've been meeting once a week, working on this really fun involved project that's part of a 12 month series of fairy tale themed artworks where I show you step by step how this work of art will be created. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi guys. He reads the comments and makes sure that the cameras somewhat track me around the studio. So you can see the techniques up close and you can see how you might duplicate them for yourself at home. Therefore, being able to make your own version of the flower elf uh, to hang on your wall and hopefully all 12 of our fairy tale themes by the end of the year. I hope everyone is really good today. Oh, everybody's fantastic. They're really excited about getting into this today. Um, I'm excited about it too. Man, we have people from all over. I see some folks from Alberta, Canada. Mm. I saw some folks from all over the United States. I even think I saw Mona here, who's from, you know, she's from, she's from Sweden. We do have a global community, which is actually kind of cool. I love that people around the world do like sharing painting and that we all have that in common, no matter where we live. We all kind of dig art and there's nothing as fun as getting to make it together. I think being social through your art space is a really amazing gift to have in your life. Um, today's going to be interesting. We're going to be focusing on the face and hair. Um, we're then going to be talking about the forward facing branches. The only caveat to that is that we have quite a thunderstorm going on. So mm. we're going to paint while, uh, as long as, you know, everything is holding. Yep. It, it seems to be pretty good. So we're, <laughs> The we're... weather lets us. And so we know we've got at least a little while. And if it gets crazy, we'll just meet back up tomorrow and finish. So don't worry, no matter yeah. how the storm affects the show. We are going to continue on. I'm ready to talk about today. Yes. So we have picture and pic but picture and picture. Whoop. There we go. I zoomed it. And we zoomed in because this is where we're going to be focusing um, at first on our next step. And we're going to be work putting in our face, working on our skin tones, working on our hair and our textures and our values. Um, you can check the description below for links to the traceable, to materials. If you look at the iCard, the other videos that we've done so far in there, so you can at any point, whenever you discover this video, do this entire project for yourself. The results I've been seeing on the internet have been amazing. Uh, we have a group, The Big Art Quest, on Facebook, and people share just quest-related stuff in there. The projects I've been seeing are incredible. I've been seeing stuff on Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest, and it's just been like, wow, you guys are bringing it. It's been brung, mm -hmm. is what I would say. I'm going to sip my coffee. Sip the coffee. Sip a sip in my coffee coffee. Check the materials description for all the colors in this project. But today I'm going to focus on this next little bit over here at the pile. Let's wander over here and see what I've got. So over here right now, looking at what I think I'm going to be doing, I've initially put out burnt umber, titanium white, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, prussian blue, quinacridone magenta, dox purple, and zinc white. I've got a palette knife because I'm definitely going to want to mix a master skin tone which means that you create the basic color of your skin tone, sort of a middle range, and then you add white and darker colors to it, allowing you to create a really nice blended variance of skin tones. So I think I'm gonna pull this out and pull out a little yellow. I'll say I take one little of that and I'm gonna get some red, about that much. And we're gonna see where this takes us. <laughs> where can we go with this? <clears throat> You'll have to excuse me, I'm a uh, Super congested and kind of just uh, in a weird space today. So bear with me, please. I really a little fluey love. Today. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I was, just uh, I, I definitely was... something's going on. I've got to take some burnt umber right here. Yep. I'm smidging it. I'm gonna put this in. She has sort of a Eastern European skin tone, so I'm trying to uh, replicate that, and this really helps me get through my whole project. My other superpower that I'm going to use, and I'm so excited because Chrissy shared with me today that she got a bottle of this, I think. Oh, yeah. If I understood the pose, Chrissy, and um, this slows down the drying time on my paint and lets me glaze, so it's like sort of a two-in-one product. I really love it. It's listed in the description below. It's one of my favorite, favorite finds um, for acrylic painting just to make my space more enjoyable. So you see we have that sort of you know, base skin tone here, and I can add brown and blue to it to make a shadow, and I can add the white and yellow to warm it up, and I've got a little quinacridone here to rosy up her cheeks. I think I'm kind of, like, ready to get into it. How are you guys doing? They're doing great. They're warning me that I'm not allowed to get the Sherpa sick and that I have to send <laughs> art hugs and big, loving, healing, warm stuff to you so you don't get sick. 
and stay on path of good health. So. Uh, I have to tell you, in my life, the best, best space in my day, other than being with my kids, who are kind of awesome sauce, um, is just getting to hang here with my husband and you guys and just have a chill out and paint. Because sometimes life, man, is not for the faint of heart. No. I, you know life what? does not play, does it? Sometimes it comes and it's like, hey, I'd like to just mess you up. <laughs> you know, and some days... <sighs> You know, we get to be here for you guys, but more often than not, you guys are here for us. You don't so even know. You don't even know it. <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> All right. So we're painting today. What are we paint? I'm going to be focusing right here on her face and kind of moving. Like I sort of sketched in features sort of, you know, loosely. Um, you'll notice over here, Luna Bella has donated some art to oh. my easel. This is herself as a kitty corn. A kitty corn? Kitty corn. Uh, they were asking about that earlier. I keep, I, I keep forgetting as the chat goes by. To me. Oh, what is that? What is that? That is my daughter, Luna Bella's artwork. She's uh, pretty. My my kids are all are, you know creative, as are your kids, I'm sure. And I just love to see what they do. And I'm proud of it. This is a number two filbert. It's very small, short handled. I'm going to dip this in water, drag off the extra water. And I'm going to just see if I can't come in and make. I'm going to see where my very lightest skin tone is. Right now, see, I'm sort of pulling this out. I'm going to just see where it is and if I'm happy with it. You know, and I feel like I just want to get a little of my ochre into it is what I'm feeling. Just a little more ochre in this. And I may actually add a little more ochre into my Master Mix as I'm looking. Right? Because she's got quite a lot of sunlight on her. And sometimes it's when you pull the white into your skin tone that you actually see it. So that's what I'm doing there. Having evaluated that, I'm going to come back with my palette knife. And I've got a lot of ochre. I can always put more out. So I'm going to come and add two more parts of this yellow ochre to my master mix. And hopefully that's going to get me to the warmth of her skin tone. And see how I did that there? These are just things that you can check when you pull the white into it. Um, it's a lot of times when you're trying to see the bias of a color, you will use white in it. Because it will kind of reveal that to you. All right, let's see how we're doing now. This is the titanium white, not the zinc. Dipping in my water to get improved flow. And we're just going to relax and sort of be fussy about this today because we can. While we spend this time together. See how light I'm making this? And I'm going to take this over to my canvas. And, oh, yes, that is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to start working, uh, you know, the shape along her brow. I may have to get my... Glasses on, so I see well, <laughs> like you do. If you've already kind of blocked in her face, this is going to glide on really nicely. That's one of the nice things about having an underpainting is it improves each layer of paint above it. I was going to do the hunt, like how many layers challenge that was going on last year, but I was really afraid that a hundred was just the beginning of how many layers of paint you could do. <laughs> I was like, you might get out of there with 100 layers of paint and nail polish, but I was super concerned we were going to get out with 100 layers of paint and uh, acrylic. Like it was going to be like, like my how many, how much paint do I own area? I've created this next lighter shade for here on the cheek. Mm -hmm. um, I may need to put out some glazing medium because I'm going to want to blend this. I'm not going to worry too much about where my eye is, to be real honest. I'm wanting to... Make sure that I've got this highlight in my field so that I'm, you know, we're painting a, I mean, on a kind of grim scale, we're painting a skull, right? With skin stretched over it. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be grim. Well, there, that is what's underneath there. That is what's underneath there. And sometimes that helps us. And so that's the thing that I can do that helps me if I'm like, hey, how do I want to do this so I can just come back in and be like, well, I know I need a highlight here. And, and that's really the reason why we see so many artists do anatomical studies, right? Oh, yeah. There's uh, The better the figurative artist is, the more you'll see that artist um, like paint every muscle. Yeah. Right? They'll, they'll do a study from the skeleton of their figure to the musculature of their figure to the skin of their figure. What, what are you doing there? Hold on. Hold I'm just lightening. Look, what? Oh, we're zooming in. So, so I'm just getting this very light. I want to, um, right here at the brow, I need to create a light zone. I need to create a very, oh, that's wonderful. I'm just creating a light zone right here at the top of the brow. Right, like you do. Or at least like I do, and hopefully you do too, huh. right? 
Interestingly enough, do me a favor while you're here. See our part? Go ahead and take this little step of moving your skin tone into the part. If you can. I'm going to wipe off a little bit and I'm going to use my glaze to make sure that I've got kind of a nice soft blend because I'd like her skin to be very soft. That was one of the things that this picture really I thought had was this beautiful sort of softness to this to this elf and I wanted to make sure that when we painted her we really found that. Put a little more white on my brush and I'm just coming here to the cheekbone. If you guys do makeup you're like oh I got this we're contouring. <laughs> That's what we're kind of doing though, we're contouring. You know, if ever you're stuck on something in art, there's a good chance that there's something else that you do that actually uses a similar school, skill that would help you through. Now I'm gonna smidge a little more yellow into my brush and get a little more white, glaze if I need it, because I need another little light color. And I'm gonna really come down here into my chin, make sure I've got a highlight there, right, that you might want above my lip little highlight. It's always nice to have a bit of a highlight above the lip. Uh, there's a thing that some of my favorite artists are doing right now around the lips. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do it. That's very uh, based on property my daughter is crazy about called Elf Gut. So I'm going to think about that. I'm getting a little of my quinacridone, which you can see is very powerful in this mixture, right? And it's mm -hmm. overpowered it. So I'm going to have to work around that. But I do want, I've got my base skin tone. I'm putting the quinacridone into it. And I'm going to get back into my white. And the reason I'm trying to rosy this up is we're going to be going into the ears. And I want the tips of the ears. Obviously, for the picture, these are like these prosthetic, not pathetic, prosthetic pr uh, ears. Pr prosthetic, yeah. Yeah. And so. <laughs> you don't, don't tell an elf they have pathetic ears. No. Them fighting words. Now, if you're a, if you're a dwarf, feel free to say that at will. Yeah, you, dwarves are allowed to there, that's, definitely I mean, express any of their feelings on that because issue. Because from a dwarf's perspective, those are pathetic ears. <laughs> but, I think it's just know. nice to warm them up, and I just want to get in here with the quinacridone and my glaze and just make sure that the tip of her ear is just pinked out, if that makes sense. Yep. You know, where I, where I want to show that she's got that sort of pinked out space, it's, it's important to me. I could have, you know, gone even more into this to... So yeah, add some more color and then I'm just working it out. I'm going to contour under her cheek now. And contour around here. And just finding that space and enjoying painting in her skin. I'm sure I'm starting to shade in around the nose, right? You start to slope that space in at the nose. Now that's pretty a pretty bad contour right there. <laughs> yep. If you were doing that in makeup, that would be a little too much. And it's true in painting too. So what would we do if we were doing our makeup and we had that going on? We'd blend those two areas, wouldn't we? Yeah. And soften that line. And so you know, you soften that line too. Make sure that that transition isn't startling. A startling transition. I want that transition to be soft and be in indirect light. <laughs> What's funny? I don't know. It, you don't for know? some reason, for some reason, <clears throat> I'm 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 anthropomorphizing the this experience, thinking about it in terms that are too human. I think you're it, yeah yeah maybe I don't know. It's I'm just... taking a little of my brown and my purple, and the reason I'm doing this is I really want to. This ear got a little thick on me, and I'm gonna want to come here, and I want to just very carefully make sure that. This is just happening to me. It might not be happening onto your canvas, but this will help you if anything in your painting is having this happen, which is that I'm going to just, this ear got a little overly thick and not defined in the soft, gentle way. So this is how I'm creating enough contrast for the ear to pop even before the hair is there. And I'm what I'm doing is I'm just taking my shadow color, right? And I'm refining it. Didn't that help a lot? It's going really well. And I feel like I'm starting to get like, you know, um, what I'm looking for in this piece. I'm going to get a little of my shadow, my brown, and my base skin tone. I'll get my glaze if I need it because I need to make a little shadow under the nose. I might even at some point get in there with the blue. See how that graded out? 
Yeah. So I'm trying to say the shadow is cool. I'm going to do my best to pay attention to my reference. However, I might. <laughs> Move it closer. Yeah, well, I mean, you can paint what you can see, right? So if I'm not seeing her well, that's definitely a challenge. Yes. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to just make sure that I have a nice little, little shadow. And it's a little overly thick, but I can always thin it back. I just want to pay attention to the shape of the nose. And where the deepest part of that shadow might be, right? Now, right here, I might have kind of an indent on the on what's happening and I can come under this. I'm gonna use the glaze to blend. This is not her eyebrow, so don't panic. <laughs> this is not her eyebrow. We're just creating the depth of the lid, right? We're just talking about the shading of the lid. Not, not, not. Anyway, her eyebrow yet. <laughs> Well, I would be freaked out. I'd be like, that doesn't look like that should be where her eyebrow goes. I don't want to put her eyebrow there, but we're just going to enjoy our, our time in our space using our glaze. You know, these transparent little coats are a great way for us to <clears throat> find space, soften space. I'm going to get into my lighter skin tone. You know, and you can even mix up large batches of you know, three or four values of your skin tone, too. To make, you know, sometimes what you're doing a little bit easier. Just make sure I'm talking about a couple things here. A little bit on the ball of her nose. She certainly has, like, a highlight coming down, doesn't she? Maybe another nice little highlight here. Talking about this up here again, bring that up. We're just saying, hey, what's going, what's, what's a foot, right? It's happening. Soft, I thought soft, you were soft. on the toe, not the foot. We are on the toe. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to make you, it. You, considering what's going on with my foot right now, you should be so surprised. No, you want to explain what, 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 what sort of joke I just made? <laughs> yes, I do. So when you look at the anatomy of a brush, you've got the handle, the ferrule, the heel, and the toe. And so you're painting with the toe of the brush. I'm painting with the toe of the brush, and John is, you know, having himself a little. He thinks he's cute. No. I'm going to get some glaze. I and have my, bad puns. Yes. And a little bit of my quinacridone. I might even zinc it. That's what my daughter told me. See my little zinc getting into my quinacridone? Secret weapon. <coughs> yep. It's quite bright. You might need to, just a smidge, get some brown and just knock it back because it's so bright. It's such a saturated color, but there are places that I just really... Ooh. I'm going to be back at the ears, again, rosing the ear. Maybe I'll come in. I'm going to rose the nose real quick. See how I'm doing that? I'm rosing the nose. This is very trendy right now. <laughs> so I'm going to go for it, especially in uh, elves. And so... I'm going to make sure I do that. I'm going to bring a little of this rose color across into the cheeks. See how we're doing? But it's very transparent, isn't it? I'm going to make sure we've got this nice little rose color. If you have a, a youthful person in your life, you may find that they have a bit of excitement when they see this done because they're going to feel like you relate to something that's very important in their life right now. Certainly what's motivating some of what I've got going on here. See how I've rosed across? Yeah. That's fun, right? <clears throat> I don't know. Fun for me. It is how are you guys fun. doing today? They're doing fantastic. Oh, good. This is really great. Everyone's really enjoying this. This is the, you know, seeing this, the, all, all the, how you're doing the face here has been really, really interesting. I'm going to light, I'm going to definitely get in here and lighten this highlight, right? This pink. I need to give it, again, another enforcer, a highlight here, but still in the pink. So I've got that. I'll give this nostril just a... Oh, I moved it the wrong way. My nostril's too high. That happens. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to just kind of remove it with my brush. Oh, look, I just, I just took it back. I said, no, you know, that's not really what I'm trying to do here. And then you just come back with your little detail brush and say, what I'm really trying to do here is this other thing and... 
You can work with me, little brush. How is everybody doing? So good. Oh, good. So good. This is, this, like I said, the, the, how you're, the details of what you're showing here on the face are really, really great. So it's fun stuff, right? Now you're just adding some highlights with this? I am coming in and adding highlights. I, I, all right, guys, I may, I'm having kind of a day. And because of that, I may kidnap you into a, a very interesting uh, experience here. I've just added another highlight. I'm going to glaze it because I want to blend it. Are, 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 what, what, what kind of experience? Uh, there Sherpa? may be freckles. There be freckles? There might be freckles. Okay. Because we want to definitely, definitely be current. We want to be trendy. This, this, this isn't like, you know... This is, this is, I'm, 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 I like freckles. So uh, gonna... Well, you clearly do. You know, it's so interesting. Um, when I was a girl, having red hair and freckles was like the worst thing ever. Like seriously. It's like just the, I'm really, really rinsing out my detail brush. If you don't. What, what, what size brush was that there? Hold this on. is a number two filbert. And if I don't get as much paint out of this ferrule as possible, my brush is going to really lose its shape. And even hot water and stuff isn't going to be enough to get it back. And I'll have to go in and hand clean out the paint to recover my brush. So that by rinsing it out here at this stage, I'm going to triple, quadruple the life of this brush, even with aggressive painting. Now, I do regularly have to save my brushes. So it's not like you don't still have to save them. I'm going to get a little of my water on my brush and come to this really fantastic uh, burnt umber. I'm going to add a little skin tone to it. I might even add a little glaze because I don't want this to be too like opaque, right? I'm going to load this up on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to just very carefully, I may even want it to be more transparent than that. The trick with freckles is that you don't want them to be heavy and opaque or orderly. You don't have to do the freckles if they're not your thing. You can just be like, no, I'll just take the rosy cheeks. But I know that this will please my kid to no end. And I also know that this might please some of your kids to no mm -hmm. end. And if there's some little brushes in here that are familiar with the style of makeup and trend, they're probably having kind of a little gleeful moment in their soul going, wow. Oh, isn't that fun? How are we liking her? Great. Freckles. See how I'm just little touches and they're not... They're not heavy. Anywhere they're heavy, I've got to soften them, right? I've got to soften them. Get asked a lot about how to do these type of techniques. And my favorite doll makers tend to do freckles on their dolls, <clears throat> especially in the ball joint dolls, which are so amazing. Uh, my daughter and I have talked about uh, hand painting a ball joint doll together. I'm actually pretty good at that. I'm going to get my master skin tone into my burnt umber. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of my Prussian blue. And I'm creating this deep shadow. But I'm going to get my glaze because I want to have control mm. of what's happening. Now, April has made a very good question slash suggestion. Hi, April. She was like, now, I have seen the, the Sherpa and Brush Guys cleaning video and the spa video. But... Has the, can the Sherpa do a video on actually rescuing a brush? Yeah, I really can. And and here's the thing. I, I, I did some tests. Um, if you saw it, you guys probably would have cried. <laughs> <clears throat> but I actually decided, I was like, what can my brushes survive? We, we, and we're going to get some of that on video, and, I think. And um, I, in front of John, who was like just going, no. I, uh, I just really went into this thing and it scrambled out a bunch of zeros. And made them flay out and then I restored them. Just to make sure that <clears throat> this advice that I'm giving is, is good advice. It's true advice. I'm not like losing my mind here. I'm going to make some more light skin tone. And I'm going to blend my nostrils while I'm working this. Right? Make sure that these lines are refined. Because that's going to be important to the 
subject. There we go. See that? She's got quite a little nose now, doesn't she? And I'll yeah. just go right into my shadow color. I've got my glaze right here. And I'm going to come under the nose a little bit and cast a little shadow. So given it how we're going, I'm, I'm definitely sure we're probably going to meet up a little bit tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You know, this, I've been hearing thundering going on the background here, so I'm I'm just uh, yeah. I, I'm worried about that just in the back of my mind here. <laughs> I don't blame you. And I get this to like we'll get the face in and let's see where we can get. So see how I'm like taking the blue to deepen the shadow just in this space. Mm -hmm. But that's really strong, and I'm saying to myself that's that's a lot, right? So I rinse out my brush. Before my paint is dry, if I get my glaze, and I just want to show you how these little micro adjustments are made. A lot of times, the time-lapse videos do show this, but if you don't know to look for it, you don't know it's happening. Right. You know, so even if, you know, you love watching time-lapse videos, this is still good for you because you, then you're going to recognize what they're doing. If you have a freckle that's too strong, you can always come back with a little zinc, watch this, and just lighten it a bit. Say hi, Dad. The zinc will absolutely soften your freckles. I'm gonna get a little of my white. I'm going to make sure that I Talk about a little highlight coming down the nose, and I'm going to enforce that one just a bit. Did you see how I did that? Yeah. Just giving it a little shine, just giving it a little thought. So, oh, I'm really loving how this is coming in. This me is really too. making me very pleased. <laughs> I'm going to put in her mouth, and then I'm going to come up and I'm going to work her eyes, and, and then we've got to consider down through here. And she's going to be um, pretty darn stunning, in my opinion. I be, think so, too. To be honest, I'm kind of uh, really blown away by her. I'm thinking my lip color is going to be mostly the alizarin, right, with a little bit of the yellow ochre. I'm going to put a little glaze over here. I'm so glad you blew up that picture for me, John. Between this and <laughs> you guys, I'm going to have some sip of coffee if a I have any heat coffee. left. In. Don't yeah. you love this whole look? I think it's like something I can do into my 80s or 90s. I think... My goal now is to be one of those advanced style icons that just kind of moves into that perfect Mother Earth space with fashion and crazy hair and flowing bits of tendrils I, like Judy Dench uh, in the Riddick movie. I, I kind of feel like if, you know. Life goals. <laughs> can you, baby, oh, can you microwave my coffee? <laughs> but, right, hashtag life goals, Judy Dench, Riddick movie. <laughs> I'll be a uh, wind elemental as I age, if that's okay. I mean, not that I'm not into the Helen Mirren vibe. That's pretty cool, too. But just, you know, you got to have some goals. I actually, if you see me on Instagram, I follow a lot of women who are uh, 60 to about 90 that have just embraced fashion and style and lifestyle. And they, they do step and repeats and they travel and they look amazing and they're not... They don't ever apologize for their age or anything. And you kind of look like a combination of Xanth and Harry Potter right now. Me? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to get this lip color. Oh, sorry, that was a real deviation. <laughs> uh, <you> know, <clears throat> hey, this is, you know what the funny thing is about the Art Sherpa show? I'm adding more alizarin in here. Is sometimes the Art Sherpa talks about funny things that are that not are, on topic. That are not on topic. <laughs> and then people say, that is not art related. And, and I go, you know what, funny, there, you're right. It's there's a couple not. of Riddick fans in the audience. Just, just a couple. There's just a couple. Just oh my couple. gosh, man, that was like my thing. Dude, we loved that show. I mean, that was that was what a cosmic awesome dude <laughs> was. I mean, like except for when the original writing of uh Altered Carbon, you know, yeah. with Takeshi. He you was can't talk true. about cuz somebody said that we're doing too many spoilers, Sorry. John. But yeah, that's oh. on Netflix now. Uh proceed at your own peril. Um <laughs> No, I love the Furians. I love that whole world. Um, it just really worked for me. If you'll notice, what I'm really paying attention to is the bow of this lip, right? And I'm making sure that the bow up here at the top, right, is quite um, dark. And that way I can highlight this down here. I'm 
sort of going to pay attention. These are going to go past, I want her mouth to be a little bit bigger, so they're going to go past, the corners of her mouth are going to go past maybe a titch, past her eye, you know, midpoint, like she's smiling. So it's a little bit on face measurement, but maybe a little bit not. And of course, this part of the bow will be a little bit bigger. As I am moving to the lower part of the bow, I might add a little more yellow and even zinc just to lighten this and warm it a bit so that the underneath part of the bow is well thought out like you do. I think sometimes we don't enjoy painting our mouths enough and they're really to me one of the more enjoyable parts to paint. I'm going to curve this down and sort of fill this out and start shading it in. That's the best. If you did not know that's the best, that is the best. I like the lipstick you're putting on there. I do too. And yes, I Fierce, tend to do full say. lips. I Like I said, it's like I'm not a good portrait painter. <laughs> but you, you, do some, you do some Sherpa girls. I do Sherpa girls. <laughs> You have, I would you, say that's more accurate. I'm a good Sherpa girl painter, but you, not a great portrait painter. And sometimes, you know, I get a little shade from artists over that. But I'm just like, you know, but you, you, you put your energy where you put your energy. I'm lightening up this lip a bit. I'm taking my base tone and I'm just finding a lighter color with a little more warmth to it. I'm going to do an ombre. Again, if you're doing any of your makeup stuff, this is really going to come from that experience and I'm going to take the center of this lip and you know, pull a slightly lighter color on it. See how that pulls it out? Isn't that nice? Yeah. So we're starting, I mean that's 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 very flat so far and we're going to get where it's not. So we've got to do a couple things. Now I'm going to do something very important here. So I have this basin that you see me have. Much like I did the freckles across here, I'm going to do some things in here when this is dry. I might dry it with my hair dryer that are going to keep the shape of the mouth that I just fought for here. And but it's also going to make it really current. So I'm going to sit my coffee, rinse out my detail brush, dry this. I'm serious. I'm helping you do a thing where people that are younger in your life are going to lose their minds. And they're going to suddenly think that you have levels of cool that they didn't think was possible. Mm -hmm. Or at least that's my own goal with my own daughter when she sees this. I'm hoping she's like, oh, Mom, you listened to everything I said. I'm going to be like, I'm paying attention. Mm -hmm. yep, they're, I'm, I'm just chuckling here in chat. They're talking about other spoilers and things. And Ian just laid the ultimate spoiler on me. What was the? Oh, well, he, we shouldn't he, he say it out loud because then we've spoiled it. If we say it, well, we've spoiled no, it for thousands of people. I'm, I'm, Ian he, says he, he spoiled it, it for chat, like whoever so showed up in it, chat. Um, uh, he put it in chat. Someone put it out there in the world. Darth Vader is Luke's dad. Ian. I know. You can always tell when Ian Jackson is in the house because Wookiees and Star Wars is going to ensue. You know when it's. <laughs> e so this is how you know Ian Jackson from Ian Garland. <laughs> yeah. Ian Jackson, Star Wars, Ian Garland, Doctor Who. Yes. That's all you need to know about the Ians, the two Ians. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you know, all I'm saying is beware of Ewoks, yo. <laughs> <laughs> beware of Ewoks, yo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Right. We'll get back to, back to our I'm going to dry favorite. this real quick so I can do this oh. really cool lip effect. This is super in right now. Okay. I will. And I can't help myself. I have to do it. Okay. Okay. So while she's doing that, I'll say... Uh, don't forget to check in the description below for a link to the traceable, the reference image, the website, all of the materials you're going to need. Um, anything you could need to complete this project should be there and available for you um, without spoilers. Well, actually, I can't say that there won't be spoilers there, but, you know, that's just sometimes how it goes. <laughs> so uh thank you guys for coming and playing with us today uh we really enjoy being able to spend this time with you as you can maybe see from us we we get as much enjoyment out of this uh spending these afternoons and, and time with you guys and it's really wonderful that so many people come together and celebrate art like this so thank you and share your <laughs> pictures with us you guys are letting me do a thing here you just have no idea how much we're, I love we're having a it. great time okay we're still going to need to make sure we have some shadow and some basic structure before we soften this and focus the blush to the center of the lip. 
We're going to have to make a really radical highlight up at the bow and then possibly one here at the nose. And this is going to put us into some really cool art space. I'm going to take my blue, my Prussian blue, and my alizarin. Get my glaze into this bit here. And you see this is my shadow color, right? And I'm going to roll this out of my brush and get it just on the tip where I have the most control at the finest point. And I'm going to come under the lip and paint in the shadow. We need the shadow. Take it down a little bit thick at the bow. And you can even sort of bring it out to the corner if you have the hand for it. I'm going to come in and deepen. Oh my gosh, look at me going right into the blue. What? Yep. I'm going to deepen the side of it a bit. See how we're doing? With the blue. Look at her mouth have a moment, right? I think that I've been listening to Erica Jane's stylist too much because I keep calling everything a moment. Like, <laughs> like the idea that in my life that I'm having like some moment that I can title and brand is um, pretty amusing to me. I'm going to switch back to my filbert. I'm going to get into my skin tones. I'm going to, you know, get into some of my alizarin, like I'm like I'm being rebellious right here. Right. And I'm going to start lightening that up. Quite a lot. Glaze is a foot. Not like you have. I'm going to see if I can't do this effect. Uh, see how it goes for me first before you join me? <laughs> Let me be the canary in your coal mine. <laughs> that's a weird thing. <laughs> well, I mean, as a guy, that's my job, right? I go first. If I make it, you guys follow. <laughs> So the trick on this is going to be to control the amount of pigment. I'm going to make sure I offload some, and I'm going to proceed very slowly in a glaze. The idea is that I want to show that the lip is tinted, but I'm going to soften that tint right here and through here because we're going to strengthen it in this really cool way. So see how I'm softening this? Let's see if I can go again. Not too much pigment. We got to do it in stages. Um, those of you that are really like watching the makeup channels and stuff, you sort of probably already know where I'm going. But this is this is how artists are talking about uh, more mystical beings lately, and I think it's a. I love the mystical stuff you're doing there. Yeah, it is kind of a cool way to go. Yep. So you can see I'm focusing the color down the center of the lip, right? Now I can take my Lizrin and my Quinacridone and, and mix them together. This is going to create a half step of color. I'm going to get some of my glaze over here. Mm -hmm. There's no need to be crazy, right? And I'll strongly pigment one little bit. It's, if I can move gently enough with this brush, I won't change. If I can't, I'll switch to my detail. Rose it up. All right, now moving to my detail. That's really it. Like, it, you know, man, I have seen people paint delicate stuff with sticks and then I'll be like, man, I got to get down to my detail brush or I ain't going to make it. And always be like, it's okay if I need to do it a certain way. I've dipped in water. Are we okay as a group? We don't mind having this little drill down, do we? Oh my gosh, no. They okay. love this. All right. This so is I'm amazing. Pulling the focus of this lip right here. And if we can see. How we do. You know, you guys can do a traditional lip. You don't have to join me. This is something that I think is stunning and amazing and one of my favorite kind of things going on right now. I'm going to get some more blue. Make sure I've got some glaze. The glaze is just really helping me like blend it out too, right? And make sure I get back my shadow. I kind of lost my, because that would still be like really seeable, right? Here we go. Just right here at the corners. We're pretty good. 
Oh, she's looking so cool. They love this. They love that. They, they, they say, keep going. They like this. Yeah, this is very, like, this is the thing. Now, I'm going to get some white, and I'm going to just tip my brush. You tip the, your toe in it? Ta yeah, I'm going to tip, tip the toe of my, and then I'm going to just come right above her lip with this white. And I'm going to tap here a little bit and tap here a little bit. See how I'm doing? As if there's a gloss. Creating that reflection for that incredible lip gloss. What? I feel like I'm awesome. So now we have that central, uh, for the more old school, you'll be like, it's a little Amadala. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that is kind of cool. But it's like, I can, I can tell you that is like, if, can we get a close up on her? Look at the, look at how like real and rosy and like, I love it. I hope you love it. Do you love it? Yeah, but everybody's loving it. They're just asking, is there a link to the reference photo? Yeah. In, in the description below, you'll find a link to our website where you'll find all of those resources conveniently available, a traceable, a reference photo, materials and information about how to complete this video, this, this product project at home, right? yes we really try to i'm taking my blue and my alizarin and my brown that almost sounded like smooth like i meant like i knew what i was talking about you do at this point point. and listen guys when we give you these resources right it's for you know student purposes only it's not like to publish on websites or anything for the pictures right, the yeah. photographs but also um like these types of alterations you have enough information in general with what we do to have this be an option so if you see this and if you're like me and you're super excited about it, I'm making a little tear duct right here. I'm paying attention to the lining of my ear and the direction of my lid, which has got a bow out, doesn't it? A titch. And I'll bring that to the eye. And all of a sudden, you guys are going to be like, I love her so much. So, so much. And I'm going to be like, me too. I love her so, so, so much. And I'm going to tear duct right here. Right, I'm putting in my little tear duct across from this one. If you imagine a chalk line, that's how you stay together on this space, right? So, you know, we've done the Big Art Quest 1 2016, and then we did About Face, and now we're throwing down. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is you guys are doing really, really, really well. You know, and this is the kind of thing that you don't often see in a class that's widely available. And if it's widely available, it's usually uh, priced, obviously because it's labor intensive. There's nothing wrong with artists being paid <laughs> for their hard work in any way, is there? But can you see, I just, I kind of, the, you curve the opposite of the eyebrow. Yeah, everybody's just loving this. This is amazing. So now that I've got that, right, I know that I've got um, a little even deeper brown shadow in there. Get my glaze so I make sure that I'm not, you know, overwhelming. You can, uh, you can see why I love this stuff. It's the coolest thing that Golden ever did. I love this product. They don't necessarily agree with that assessment of mine. <laughs> it's like my opinion. Hmm. I've shared it and everybody smiles at me. It's like, well, we're glad you like it. I don't know, like we would personally be like, coolest thing we ever made. <laughs> But I think that they're really happy when people appreciate what they've done. They work hard. And so what I'm doing is I'm creating that deep shadow at the eye socket. You've got to realize that this is a hole that a ball has been put in, right? Like if, you, if you've never done this with me, you guys might not know that I have how to draw a realistic eye, how to draw an eye from the side, how to, you know, draw a nose. Just to talk about these shapes. And this is the one that we're talking about at the moment. Isn't that lovely? I and like she has it. really strong makeup, but I actually feel that for this character, that's not necessarily the right choice for her. So I'm going to take a little bit of my um, Diox in my quinacridone, and I'm just going to cool it a touch, right? And I'm going to get some glaze, and I'm going to work my zinc. And I am going to have this purple color, but it's going to be not so overpowering is like her current makeup is a very strong makeup which you know me i did the geisha i love that it's just on her i'm feeling this is we've got to go this different way 
And so I'm going to definitely, definitely start to talk about the tone and the tint and all of that, but more, see how we're doing? It's like a blush more. And so I'm going to just use these ranges to express that. Is everybody all right? Yeah. Okay. I don't mind just spending a little extra time in spaces like a face because that's where your characters come to life. So now that I've got this lid, I'm going to come right into my zinc. I haven't rinsed my brush. It's a dirty brush. And right above the lash line, I'm going to lighten it a little bit and pull that in to the lid. Just a little bit. See how we're doing? And we're softening and blending. It just makes a small shade at first. At first, it's what we're doing, right? The small shade. Just paying attention to the little bit of the light there. Zinc being our friend in this particular case. And then the other place, you know, you can actually think about the zinc is also at the brow bone, just a little bit to shape it. Don't get too overpowering with it. If I do, I'll have to fix it. If you, you don't have to fix it. But we're just trying to make her have a less worldly look. I mean, this, the, the photographer did an amazing job and the model is insanely gorgeous, right? But we're trying to take what we've started with, which is this great reference, which gives us a lot of wonderful information about light mm -hmm. and shadow. And then we're taking what we know in our art. And I'm going to come here and, you know, I'm going to make sure that my crease has a shadow. All the things that you expect in makeup, right? And make sure that she feels more than human. You know, Elvish is like next level, right? If you're, if you're watching The Magicians right now, that's a, a very interesting space that they created for the elves. Look at that around her eye. Doesn't she just feel... Yeah just more right just more here now I'm gonna rinse out a little bit and what am i going to do i'm going to come and i'm going to get my blue and i'm going to come right under this little bit right here the blue and darken that I'm actually not inclined in this case to work those lashes. I think they will take away from the work that we're doing. Now I can always go back as I look at it and examine it, making sure I've gotten some nice shadows. Like uh, what's underneath the lid is casting a little bit of shadow, right? That's what you're looking for. Does she look really ethereal? Mm-hmm. Goal. <laughs> I, I, I and and this is I'm not sure if it's French name Pascal. Mm -hmm. She says she loves your makeup so far. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, on on the girl, right? Um, you know what? I, I <laughs> she wasn't specifying, so I'm just gonna say I think your both your makeup and her makeup look pretty good. So, you know, could be either one. Could be either one. I'm just making sure that you know everything is well defined, and I'm talking about these spaces. I'm gonna come right here with just this extra strength blush just at this corner. And then the pop. Now, you could leave her without brows and just shade and that's one really kind of like out, you know, otherworldly look. I'm probably gonna work a little brow. Um, I think either choice at this stage is probably okay. I'm getting a little white paint. and I'm pulling it on the tip of my brush. And I'm going to come here where the lid has a highlight. And as carefully as I can, just as carefully as I did on the lip, I'm going to tap out this high reflection. See it? Mm. You know, you're tapping out a high reflection. You can bring a little up here. But what you're saying is it's almost shimmering. By the way, this works in your real makeup, too, if you ever have to do anything. <laughs> that, 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 you know, everyone is, I'm like holding my breath watching this because this is like... There she is. So her, her, she's very magical. She is. She just got, and, and I, I saw it scroll up. I said, someone was saying she looks very much like a Luna elf. Yes. 
Yes, or um, a, uh, you know how um, the elf guts uh, ball joint dolls are like, they're a little dark. No, like our Luna. Like, oh, you know. like our Luna. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> okay, because like my Luna is nothing like that. Like there's some of that in her. There's some current contemporary artists. I don't enjoy the 3% dead element. <laughs> right. So I'm just removing that. It's not my thing. Right. But there were elements of the design I was like, that's fantastic. So, you know, you take that concept and what appeals to you and what works for you and then goes, uh, and I'm leaving all the stuff that kind of didn't really speak to my soul. Yeah, no, it's, that's, you know, and as artists. Now, if you were do. doing her blonde, right, uh -huh. you would really want to avoid the eyebrows. And her, yep. Right, this would be, you would soften this line here even a bit and you would do just the lightest eyebrow and you would like take her hair down blonde and, and she would be just that very fair thing. But I really like this black hair mm -hmm. against the background. So I'm not going to go that way, which means I am going to give her eyebrows. Okay. I am. Yes. In hair. Need eyebrows. <laughs> she needs some eyebrows. Tracy says she looks so serene. Doesn't she? Like, I might add a little pink to her part. Right? I might get, I've got a little of this very pink skin tone. I might enforce that up her part because I think that that's really going to. Help me when I'm talking about her hairline. I've over thickened this area, right? Because I'm gonna be coming in with the hair. And uh, like Hair Club for Men, I wanna be able to seed it. <laughs> so I'm just making sure that I've got a little room to seed a hairline where I want one. This is a slightly harder edge than I like. So I'm gonna come and get a little of my very light skin tone and my glaze because I want to very softly, you know, kind of uh, make sure that that's not so harsh right here at the chin. Make sure that we're not so intense. Softening that a bit, a bit, a bit. A little alizarin, a little basic skin tone. My glaze, my glaze. Now, I know we're softening about... this. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I just, I, I just want to let you know that we're approaching about an hour into this one today. Okay. And let me, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish to the eyebrows and then we'll just meet up tomorrow. I'll just reschedule for tomorrow and we'll meet up okay. tomorrow. Yeah. I'm I... just going to get through my chin and my eyebrows. See, I'm just trying to soften this line. That's gotten a little overly big, but I'm going to come back with a shadow like you have underneath. I've just got to work it. Yep. And then I'm going to put in her eyebrows and we're going to be... Now we wanted these to be in about an hour section. We knew this, the last part would go a little longer, but this the, we just kind of got a lot more ground to cover here. Well, I think what happened is I could have sped through her face. Yeah, but this But is... I recognized that I needed to spend some time in her face. I have hair coming in front, in front of this chin. Yeah. I'm just making sure that I've got a good shape here so that when we come in tomorrow, we're not struggling. You know, because sometimes it's hard from day to day to remember where you are. I'm going to come under the chin here with my shadow in my glaze. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And make sure that that's soft. See how soft that is? And that helps pull her face. Yeah. And then a little bit, you know, I'm going to blend, but softly. See, just very softly. And the glaze is letting me do that. That's how I get to do that. Now, right under her mouth. I'm going to take just a smidge with, again, glaze. I'll create that shape, but I'll do it in a way that is not too overpowering so we don't lose the delicate softness mm. of her face, which Ooh. we would not be happy to lose. Now we'll do her eyebrows, as you will. Eyebrows. I'm super pleased with all of this. Hopefully you guys are too. Yes. Um, you know, her hair is black and her brows should be black and I'm going to just, uh, work this and put a little black out. You could do her hair in colors. I could. There, there's lots of people who are thinking of colors out here. There's lots of good color suggestions. So I was, oh, her hair is just gorgeous. We're yeah. going to be getting into some of that. And, uh, as we go along, we're going to be adding to the, to the images. They're going to be, we're just going to take them where we need to take them. So I'm taking mm -hmm. a little of my black and my brown. I'm making a dark color, but I'm glazing it. This is true for your eyebrows too, if you need to uh, artificially put them in. This, t this tint, this undertone, right? 
when I come back with the hairs is going to help me make this uh, feel really much more like we want. So I'm going to line up the nostril with the front of the eyebrow. I'm going to come along the bone. And I'm just going to very softly, see how this is just a very soft color for at first? A couple benefits to this. It, as it builds up, mm -hmm. it will help make the eyebrows feel better. Corner, nose, line up. See how we're doing that right up there? And as I go to put in, you know, the little eyebrow detail, it will keep them from looking like just caterpillars that are running across her forehead. Which, you know, can happen. And may not be a bad thing. It just depends on what you're wanting. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you were like, I'm not into the caterpillar, that might not be a good look. <laughs> but I'm just trying to make sure that before I put in that final eyebrow kind of work that I have that basis and I'm real happy with it to be super honest. Really happy with it. Like really, really, really happy with this. Whatever else we've got going on this year in our lives, I think this big art quest space is insanely cool this year. I am thinning the water, if you're wondering, so I take my water and I kind of just thin it, right? Because I don't want to pull out fluid paint, it's going to be really glossy, and I want it to be the Mars black, so I'm just thinning it so I can get some flow. I get a little of that on my tip. I'm going to come here, and see, it's just a very powerful thing, and now I'm very grateful that I've got this kind of shadow under the eyebrows. See how we're doing? Yeah. You're just going to tap that along. You just go to like you're happy. And see, I feel like when her black hair is in, this is going to be like, ba bam. That's my feeling. That's my feeling. And I'm just willing to spend as much time with her as necessary. That's well, I think that what everybody's enjoying is that you spent an entire hour on the face. I mean, maybe we needed to, right? I think everybody really wanted you to, I think is what happened here, is that this was um, a really great experience for everyone to be able to see, you know, because you don't generally get to take slow down as much. I really don't, and I don't get to, you know, put that focus in, but... And, and these, you know, these times when we, uh, we get and these multi parts and someone was asking, is this whole, you know, what, what hoot level is this? It's just, it's, you know, it's not really hoots anymore. Like this is like, so you've got your skills, you've done some hoots, but how can you put those together? This whole process is, is that you guys share art with me all the time. And I noticed there was a particular way of painting that you guys just dreamed. Yep. Just dreamed you were going to be able to do. And I was like, well, how would I show them how to do that? Like, how would I get them to the space where they could do that type of painting? And I realized what it is, is that we've got to break it into parts so that you guys can take in a small amount of information at a section, watch it, rewind it, work it out. We weren't rushing through the projects. You weren't feeling that pressure. And then break down these very complicated pieces into smaller, less complicated pieces. Um, I think everything, okay, like, I swear everything you need to know about life is somewhere in where the sidewalk ends. And I think that's, I think that as Shel Silverstein understood it, you eat a whale one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. And these projects are our whales. And I think sometimes beginners don't realize that um, they're capable of so much more. Like once they get those basic skills down and they understand what the products are and how the colors kind of work, that then it's just about understanding how a painting is constructed and having someone slow down and say that we get from here to here this way and we get from here to here this way and you guys always just like are like oh that's amazing like i understand that process so much more so tomorrow we'll get together we'll finish her up i'll i will post her up be good to yourselves be good to each other and i want to see you at the easel really soon specifically tomorrow <laughs> all right bye-bye